There are growing calls for rich nations to compensate poor nations for the damages they've suffered as a result of climate change. We became a victim of something with which we had nothing to do. It's often referred to as loss and damage. So what is that? At a COP summit like this, there are three buckets of work. The first is to reduce carbon emissions. The second is to work out how to pay for adaptation measures like building seawalls. And the third is this loss and damage issue. And that's stuff that frankly just can't be adapted to. That's the loss of villages, of towns, of whole industries, the loss of language and of cultural identity. And it's that issue that is overshadowing this summit. To be honest, the answer to that question is, it's as long as a piece of string, it's almost unknowable. But I'll give you one example. Pakistan recently suffered from devastating floods, huge proportions of its country underwater, millions of people heading into winter with no shelter, no electricity, and widespread health problems now as a result of waterborne diseases. And the president of Pakistan has recently said the latest estimate for the cost of recovering from this damage is 30 billion US dollars. And this all happened despite our very low carbon footprints. That's one country in one year and just one event. So the scale of loss and damage is huge and it runs into the hundreds potentially of billions, maybe even trillions. Well, that is the critical and controversial question because poor nations say it's rich nations. They invented uh, the combustion engine. They got very wealthy off burning fossil fuels and they drove the climate crisis. The continent of Africa, for example, is responsible for less than 4% of global carbon emissions and yet it is the most vulnerable to it. But the problem is that wealthy countries don't want to admit liability. They don't even want to refer to this issue as a compensation issue. And that is where the discussions are getting stuck. There's no way of claiming specific compensation for loss and damage. What there is, is an absolute ton of multilateral institutions like the UN, the World Health Organization, the Red Cross and so on, who will come and help with disaster relief. But Poor nations say that's part of the problem, actually, because it doesn't really address the specific needs. Often the aid doesn't come fast enough, and no one is talking about how to compensate nations for non-economic losses, like the loss of culture, history, and language. Frankly, it's been complicated and fraught. You've got the poor nations, developing nations, saying, um, we can't just talk about this anymore. It has to happen. We have to find the money. And you've got wealthy nations dancing on the head of a pin, saying we're very supportive of the idea, we can see how much you're suffering, and we're very sorry for causing climate change, but also at the same time they're trying to avoid being held responsible or liable, crucially, for historical climate change damages and any that might happen in the future.